Thank you for the introduction. My name is Myungjin Kim from the Office of Research and Standards in the Office of Generic Drugs. In my presentation today, I focus on product-specific guidances of non-complex drug products. The four learning objectives of my presentation are as follows. Discuss non-complex drug products and good for two commitments of non-complex new chemical entities. Describe format and content of product-specific guidances of non-complex drug products. Discuss general framework of how PSGs of non-complex drug products are developed and revised. And lastly, share a recent example of significant PSG revisions. Since 2007, FDA has published PSGs to provide clear and direct recommendations to applicants. As my presentation will focus on PSGs of non-complex drug products, it is important to lay out what these products are. They are of those products that are not considered as complex drugs. They do not have a complex active ingredient, complex formulation, complex route of delivery, or complex drug device combinations. As part of the FDA's commitments under the GUDUFA 2, FDA is committed to issue PSGs of 90% non non-complex NCEs that are approved on or after October 1st, 2017, at least two years prior to the earliest lawful AND filing date. PSGs can assist applicants with identifying the most appropriate methodology and approaches for developing generic drugs and generating evidence recommended to support ANDA approval, such as BE studies, dissolution methods, and BCS-based waiver options. To achieve this goal, PSGs of non-complex drug products contain the following categories to clearly indicate what the agency's recommendations are. Here's one example of what a typical PSG page looks like. In general, PSGs list active ingredient, the dosage form and route, recommended studies, including how many studies, type of study, either fasting, fat, or both, study design, strengths, subjects, and additional comments for consideration. PSGs also specify which analyte to measure in appropriate biological fluid, which analyte is used for BE assessment with 90% confidence interval, and you waiver request for additional strengths of in vivo testing and dissolution test methods and sampling times. This slide shows more specific examples for the PSG content of a standard BE study based on PKN points. For most non-complex drug products, FDA generally recommends a single dose, two treatment, two period crossover study using either healthy subjects or other populations as appropriate. However, depends on the safety profiles or the specific characteristics of drug products, certain specific populations such as geriatric subjects or females of reproductive potential may be excluded. In addition, other study designs such as a parallel, partial, or fully replicate may be used. In terms of the type of BE study, fasting fat and fasting sprinkle BE studies may be recommended. PSGs also specify which analyze to measure and in which biological matrix such as plasma, serum, whole blood, or urine should be used. In addition, they include a reference to FDA's dissolutions method database, the solution testing for split tablets if the tablets are scored, and waiver for additional strengths or BCS-based waiver options. Finally, PSGs include recommendations when certain special considerations may be relevant. These include alcohol dose dumping and total feeding tube drugs with a partial AUC evaluations, NTI drugs, 
highly variable drugs, endogenous compounds, concomitant drugs, pharmacogenomic information, and safety measurements. Overall, PSGs and general BE guidance provide FDA's current thinking and expectations for generic drug development. For most non-complex drug products, the focus of establishing BE is on the release of the drug substance from the drug product into the systemic circulation. Therefore, FDA guidance on BE studies with peak end points for drugs submitted under an ANDA is the key guidance to consider. Applicants should refer to the published PSGs when considering the appropriate BE study and other studies for their proposed drug products. In addition to PSG recommendations, labeling of a reference product provides valuable information that should be considered in study design and conduct. These include attention to appropriate subject screening and selection, inclusion and exclusion criteria, and appropriate clinical safety monitoring. FDA routinely assess if there are any PSGs with major or significant deviations from the general BE guidance, or if there are any newly identified safety concerns. Additionally, FDA has ongoing efforts in updating PSGs as changes are made to the approved new drugs. Some examples are approval of additional strengths and administration method, including sprinkle on soft food. There are additional resources or guidance to utilize. For example, the dissolution information for a drug product can be found in the FDA dissolution methods database. Other useful resources are FDA's guidance on tablet scoring and FDA's guidance on BCS-based waiver. While FDA publishes PSGs describing agents' current thinking and expectations on how to develop generic drug products, PSGs do not establish legally enforceable responsibilities. Therefore, applicants may use an alternative approach if it satisfies the requirements of the applicable status and regulations. The next several slides provide some valuable information to consider. In terms of BE study design for most dosage forms that release a drug intended to be systemically available, FDA generally recommends a single dose, two treatment, two period crossover study using either healthy subjects or other populations as appropriate. In such studies, if a drug has a long elimination half-life, an adequate washout period between treatments in the crossover study should be considered. Alternatively, a parallel study design can be used. If there are any analytical assay sensitivity issues, multiple units of the high strength can be administered, provided that the total single dose remains within the labeled dose range, and the total dose is safe for administration to the study subjects. Generally, the highest market strength can be administered as a single unit. If the highest strength is not deemed safe for healthy subjects or the general population, a lower strength can be considered in these subjects. When safety considerations preclude the use of either healthy subjects or the general population, applicants may consider patients for whom the drug is intended to treat. In some cases, study subjects may be limited to not of reproductive potential in females. For example, based on the reference products labeling, if a drug has embryo phytotoxicity and the half-life is long, or if the half-life is short but the label recommends female contraception for a long period after the last dose, Study subjects may exclude females of reproductive potential. Other example is when geriatric subjects are excluded due to safety concerns. Given the potential impact of pharmacogenomics on safety and PK variability, use of genotype or phenotype information to screen 
appropriate study subjects can be useful. Pharmacogenomic information may be considered to improve safety in subjects or to reduce PK variability in a parallel study design. Lastly, if study subjects include females of reproductive potential, use of effective contraception may be considered. Some modified release drug products recommend an administration of capsule beads, granules, or crushed tablet on soft food to help drug administration in patients with dysphagia and to minimize choking hazards when a capsules or tablets are ingested as intact. Therefore, if the labeling of a such a product indicates that the product can be administered sprinkled on soft food, FDA recommends that applicants conduct a sprinkle BE study, and this is reflected in PSGs. For each treatment arm of a sprinkle BE study, the product should be sprinkled on one of the soft foods mentioned in the labeling of the reference product, typically in applesauce. In terms of co-administration of other drugs, if females of reproductive potential are considered in BE studies, they should be either practicing absentees or use of contraception. If hormonal contraceptions are used, consider a potential drug interaction between a drug and hormonal contraceptives. For endogenous compounds, applicants should measure baseline concentrations for each dosing period and perform baseline correction that are period specific. In terms of fat BE studies in general, they are conducted with a high fat meal. However, in some cases, Due to considerable effects of high fat meal on bioavailability and safety concerns, a fat BE study may be conducted with a low fat meal with approximately 25% of total calories from fat. This approach may be considered if the reference product labeling recommends that a drug can be taken with or without food, but also recommends that a drug should not be given with a high fat meal. For a co-packaged product, if the applicant has an approved ANDA for the single entity of a co-packaged product, the applicants may cross-reference this approved ANDA for their co package product. For highly variable drugs, applicants may use either a partial or fully replicate design with a reference scale BE analysis approach applied to specific PK matrix that exhibit a high intrasubject variability for the reference product. In PSGs, such a recommendation is included but they also state that applicants provide evidence of high variability in the BE parameters of AUC and or CMAX. For detailed information on this approach, applicants should refer to the PSG for progesterone oral capsule. FDA often receives controlled correspondence inquiring if a reference drug product is considered as a highly variable drug if the PSG is silent on this topic. In this case, if available, in-house ANDA data that can provide detailed information about intrasubject variability under fasting or fat conditions for the reference product can be useful if the new drug application does not have such a data to make that assessment. In other cases, Pilot BE studies or the literature report may indicate that a certain drug is potentially highly variable. In this scenario, while it is acceptable to use a replicated crossover study design, an adequacy of the use of reference scaling to widen BE limits will be evaluated during the ANDA review cycle. In addition, it will be dependent on factors including but not limited to good study conduct, and evidence of high variability in the reference product for the BE.
In general, PSGs are updated with a reference scale average BE approach when A and DAs are approved based on the replicated studies. BCS-based waiver is a beneficial alternative BE approach for immediate release solid oral drug products. There are many drugs with high solubility potentially eligible for a BCS waiver, where in vitro data may be acceptable to demonstrate bicovalence based on the BCS. This BCS waiver approach is useful because it can reduce both the cost and unnecessary human drug exposure for developing generic drugs. And it can expedite the process to promote generic drug development and approval. FDA has included the BCS waiver options to PSGs when such recommendations are appropriate. This determination is made when the FDA BCS committee has reached an agreement on the BCS classification. If a BCS waiver option is not listed in PSGs for drugs that may be eligible for a BCS waiver, FDA may not have classified them yet. In this case, applicants can submit a control correspondence with data and request a BCS waiver. Applicants may use information contained in the approved labeling of the reference product to support such a request. However, it should be noted that a decision regarding the acceptability of the waiver request will be made upon the review of the data submitted in AENDAs. Moving on to a recent example of significant PSG revisions, Increased transparency on PSGs provides applicants a better opportunity to efficiently allocate their resources. However, some PSGs were not in alignment with the FDA's current thinking and the reliability of these PSGs was in question. One example is on FAT and fasting BE studies for orally administered drug products. As a result, Applicants were requested to conduct a FAT or fasting B study as part of the ANDA review. To increase the reliability and transparency of PSGs, and as an ongoing effort to bring PSGs up to the current standard, FDA recently revised the PSGs of solid oral dosage products to include a FAT or fasting B study recommendations. It is better to know the current advice in PSGs rather than receiving an ANDA deficiency. In summary, PSGs and general BE guidance provide scientific recommendations to efficiently develop generic drug products. Furthermore, increased transparency on PSGs should assist applicants to better allocate their resources. For non-complex NCNDAs approved on or after October 1, 2017, FDA continues to meet the GUDUFA2 commitment, which is to publish the PSGs at least two years prior to the earliest lawful ANDA filing date. The BE recommendations are revised as appropriate to ensure that the most up-to-date BE information is available to the public. To fulfill this, FDA has ongoing efforts to update PSGs with the latest current thinking as new information becomes available. Lastly, applicants may use an alternative approach if it satisfies the requirements of the applicable status and regulations. With that, this slide has some useful and relevant web page links for your reference. For more information about FDA's PSG publications and to search for the most recent versions of PSGs, refer to the Product Specific Guidances for Generic Drug Development webpage. With that, 
Thank you so much for your attention.